Okay, good morning. Uh, this is Ron. Sunday morning. We had a great discussion yesterday. We talked about forgiveness. Uh, we talked about uh, a lot of things. We, we, we Forgiveness was based on our awareness and uh, seeing ourselves with the with the uh, what's the term that that we talked about uh, the Stockholm syndrome and what that has done to the African <clears throat> and the power that uh, the, the 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 power empowerment that we have in recognizing that and coming coming forth, coming out of it. And and uh, so from that perspective, uh, we, we talked about forgiveness and the difficulties of that and, and, and looking at that a, a little bit. So, uh, but anything, a lot's going on in the world. Uh, any any thoughts or questions on anything else? Any Anything that may have grabbed your attention? Hey, Ron, this is Charles. Hey, Charles. How you doing? I'm doing good. Um, how do everyone on the line feel about the death penalty? Because it was a while before they could do any kind of uh, death penalty, but they bring it back the uh, injection again. It used to be they talked about fine squad uh, electric chair, so they don't brought back the medicine again to he uh, uh, do way do um, execution. How do everyone on the line feel about that? All righty, got a question out there, guys. What What do you think? Well, good morning, everyone. Um, Mr. Charles, as a criminal justice oh. major and um, as a political science major, one of the things you need to know about the death penalty is. It's a system that is it's never going to have favor with the African-American and poor white people. Um, when you look at the state of Wisconsin, um, and it's been proven that just because a state has capital punishment, it's not a deterrent. Um Wisconsin, they don't have the death penalty. Um, the state of South Carolina, it has the death penalty. Yet per 100,000, you would think the state of South Carolina would have a lower a murder rate than Wisconsin. But so with capital punishment, it has never showed favor towards the African-American and poor white. You look at the state of South Carolina, um, what the state of South Carolina is known for, they electrocuted the youngest African American, uh, George Sani Jr. He was 12 or 13 years old down mm. in Clarendon County. Don't um, have mercy. So, um, yet, capital punishment is very effective. Just in the United States, it's, it's not effective. If you would, uh, that's all I can tell you. But overseas, capital punishment is very effective, and I think Canada had capital punishment at one time, and they removed it. So there's no capital punishment in Canada, um, and Canada has a lower murder rate than the United States. So I hope that kind of helped you, Mr. Charles. Thank you. Thank you, George. Anyone else? I feel like, well, I have never felt like there needed to be a death penalty, ever. Um, because once you execute a person, whether it's the right person or not, you can't bring them back. The other thing is that since I have um, begun to understand who I am, I do not believe that uh, we have the right 
to uh, take anybody's life. Um, I believe that um, punishment should not go beyond a prison sentence. Uh, I don't think that death punishment uh, is uh, bring justice to anyone. I don't. Uh, only thing it brings is our uh, revenge. I don't think um, the death penalty does anything to really deter because most of the people who are executed for, for murder do it in the heat of passion or do it or, uh, or they do it in the commission of a crime. So um, both of those, those um, are not deterred, do not deter rather others from doing it. So my whole position is the death penalty should be um, taken off the books everywhere, worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Anyone else? I agree. I'm not uh, in favor of the death penalty. Um, seems like everywhere it was initially enacted was against African Americans. Um, and the whole judicial system is, is, is swayed against African Americans. I mean, so no, I'm not in favor. Thank you, Audrey. I, uh, I, I, I join I, what everyone is saying. I, I agree. I'm not in favor either. Uh, I, I do think it would, in the places that you looked at, support the death penalty, uh, the, the biases of the African and, and uh, people of color. Uh, I think uh, George mentioned some countries that doesn't have it. I, I wonder uh, if it's a deterrent, if you actually know that it is equally applied based on your crime. Uh, the, the other thing is what we discovered yesterday talking about the, the, the Stockholm Syndrome, uh, the, the violence in our community is affected by so many things. The reason why we hate each other, the reason why there is such a uh, hatred of and, and disrespect for women and those kind of things. So based on those psychological uh, factors, I don't think it deters anything either, at least uh, in our neighborhood. So uh, no, I just agree with it. And, and uh, good question, Charles. It sparked some, made us think a little bit. Uh, what, 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 what are your issues with it, or, or how do you feel about it, Charles? Yes, I, I feel the same way. What, what uh, George had talked about, and I feel the same way what Rev had said because. I don't think it, 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 by killing someone because they don't kill someone else. I mean, they, it, it's all depends on how you, how the person look at it. And like Ray said, it, it, it could be a hate issue or it could be trying to get back at someone because he, he killed a family member. I mean, and we all talking about, um, uh, loving everyone despite on um, whatever they did his life need to be changed and we have to be for life well that 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 very well may be why we're discussing it now charles uh as, as this was being answered by different ones one of the things i I'm, i have to be honest about there have been crimes where I have thought, you know what, that that that's 
that's punishable by death. I, I have thought that uh, in in my immaturity uh, and and allowing my feelings and emotions to get the better of me. Uh, however, what we're discovering and who we are and, and where we're discovering now, I, I can you know, take another look at that and think, wow, I, I, I too at one time uh, felt this or that way. And that's just being honest. So uh, I, I think a lot of what we voice, uh, give breath to on this line is, is stuff that, that needs to be addressed in the macro. And uh, so on that note, I, I thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, that, that, is a, that, that is a big one. Not only you, Ron, I, I was myself thinking the same way until I've been on this uh, uh, thing with everyone here, and it, it, it changed your mind about what society and what the law of the land may be. It's about... Uh, it's about your heart and your soul instead of you thinking about your mind or your brain. Um, Ron, yeah. I just have another quick comment. Yeah. Yeah. You know how sometimes you feel like, um, you know, the, the good people die young and the, yeah. and the other ones seem to hang on forever? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. I've often thought about that. And the conclusion I came to is that the creator is giving them every opportunity, every opportunity to change their minds. Um, so that's what I think. I mean, yeah. so if, if we institute the death penalty, then we're taking away their opportunity to to discover who they are, um, and then that's on us, isn't it? You're absolutely right, and, and, and that's what I mean. I'm at the place now where where I, I I do know better. I don't let those feelings get the better of me. But there there was a time when when people do something so so evil, just so nasty, like they. Uh, the, the crime that Kathy described when a man beat the woman to death in front of her mother who was in a wheelchair, uh, broke in the house. I, I mean, I, 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 it, that took me a minute to, to get over that. Uh, I, 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 I see it differently now. But, but uh, you're absolutely right. This whole thing is spiritual. There's nothing that doesn't happen that is spiritual. And, and that's the eye that, that we need to see things. And, and that is why it, it, it uh, crossed Charles' mind to bring it up. So, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%, Audrey. Quick, the, oh, excuse me, good morning. I only disagree with capital punishment because it's not a fair system. However, if it was fair, I would support it. Um, by way of the, the Bible, when they brought the female to Jesus on adulterous act, they got to bring that male too. So I'm just against capital punishment because it is not fair. Yet if it was fair... I would probably support it. So I'm not looking at it from a spiritual aspect, or maybe I am looking at, I believe in life, you should be fair and swear. So, um, and when you're not fair and swear, it, it, things are going to be altered. Thank you. Um, I really don't. You're going out, Pastor. We can't hear you. May have lost him. I think you Pastor, are you still there? Yeah. 
uh, while, while he's gone or, or coming back. Uh, George's question, I, I was trying to remember where the scripture was where David committed uh, a sin. might have been where he killed Uriah. I can't remember. And uh, he said God told him that, that he would be punished for it. He begged God by saying, you judge me. I don't want men to judge me. Men are harsh. Men are unfair. And, and I take that to mean capital punishment will never be fair. It is not taken from a spiritual place. It is not looking at anything but vindictiveness or, or being evil. They, they, they call it punishment, but it, it, it's more to it than that. I don't think there's anything equal or fair about it, or never will be. So that that's to me uh, is another reason to oppose it. But anyway, Pastor, are you back? Uh, yeah, I'm back. You you pretty much said okay. what I was going to say that. <clears throat> um. The the um, I was about to say if you're right a thousand times, and you make a mistake one time, that's one life too many. Uh, yeah. Also, um, I, I believe that everyone deserves another chance, even when the guy beat the, the, the young lady to death in front of her mom. Uh, that was horrendous. However, uh, there are no exceptions <clears throat> to forgiveness. So when you be, when you um, are in prison for what you did, <clears throat> that's prosecution, not persecution, and you can forgive someone and still um, and, and still imprison them for what they did. I think it's a step too far when we are life itself and then we extricate the life from someone's body as opposed to giving them an opportunity uh, to uh, become aware of who they are. And I do not believe that, that, that we have <clears throat> the right to do that. And, and if I may go into it a little deeper, um, when we when when we are in an environment that's balanced, let's say that that we are experiencing harmony, and the harmonious nature of humanity is to prevail in force in the earth. Yet there are those who are still uh, unaware of who they are. <clears throat> we have the right. To, to extricate ourselves from this earth, to leave these bodies on our own terms. We just, we have been taught that we can't. So what I'm saying is this, if Elohim, our creator, if a womb does not, kill someone or take their life because they took another life and we are the image and likeness, then what gives us the right to do that? We, we do something that's much more um, detrimental then extricated somebody's life from their body. When we when we kill people's reputation or character, uh, when we denigrate people by our speech or our actions, when we cause people to feel like they're not worth worthy of living, that's far more detrimental than it is to in someone's life. So I think that we cannot truly approach anything without approaching it 
from by, by way of the eye, um, as opposed to the eyes. I, I mentioned how I my body feels, how I feel in this body yesterday, and when this question first came up about the death penalty, I be, I, I felt and, and feel an agony uh, for not only those who were executed, but also for those who did the execution. Because the only reason that I believe we execute people is because we truly don't know the value or don't accept the value of life itself. And when we execute people based upon race or socioeconomic background, we're not doing it as a deterrent. We are doing it to put others on notice. We are doing it uh, for the same reason that the enslavers were cut off the head of an uh, slave or uh, enslaved person <clears throat> and put it on the stick so that all the rest of the enslaved people could see it when they boarded the ship or when they came back to the plantation. Do we call that a deterrent? Or is that intimidation? Or a higher degree of intimidation? Or a deadly degree of intimidation? And, and um, I don't believe that the death penalty has anything to do with the deterrence because it has been statistically proven that it does not deter. So it is, is more of, of vengeance and, <clears throat> and intimidation than anything else. And it is no accident that um, the uh, death penalty is meted out unfairly. Um, it was never intended uh, for poor white people or wealthy white people, ever. It was always intended for us. So I believe very strongly that um, if Elohim does not kill someone for what for having killed someone else, then, and we are Elohim, then we should not do it also. I mean, we don't have a right to do it. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, indeed. Hey, Josh. So we, we, we must learn to live from what we see with our eyes closed rather than living from based upon what we see with our eyes open. And that in mm -hmm. itself will um, help more people become aware of who they are because awareness of who you are is more of a deterrent than anything. I'm done. I guess so. Uh... Well, in first, and see if anybody else has a question. Anybody has a question? Comment? I have one, Ron. You might get ready yes, to say sir. the same thing. Um, it, 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 if that person had committed a crime, like I said, against your your family, and and he might not understand. Or uh, he might not recognize what we, what you recognize if you was a uh, 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 if you were spiritual. I said like that, and you start hating him for what he did, and then you you hate him so bad. You, 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 if what, when when they say he get a death penalty for what he done, and you be saying good because he killed my family member. And it's almost put you right there with him. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, it does put you there with him. 
it, it, it turns you, you, you all, what you're saying is you, you turn into the same inhumane person, type of person that he has become. Yes. Uh, that, that type of rage in you. you. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, and that uh, goes into what Pastor said earlier. I mean, uh, you, you, you are seeing through, through your eyes. And, and, and what I was saying earlier, uh, that's, it, it was a, a very immature part of me that could not see uh, what we're talking about now when that man committed that crime against that woman. I, I couldn't see that. It took me a minute. I, it, I, I had to, to, to you know, as, as we've talked about, sit with it a minute. I had to. So it, it's a very, you know, you, you're right. It, you, you, you turn back into the beast. You, that's, that's not who we are. That's the side of us that we uh, are trying to move away from. But yeah. Can anyone else want, want to speak to that? I have a question um, or either a comment. When somebody hurt you or do something to you, isn't it natural for you to to want them to feel the hurt that they put on you or cause you to feel? Is that not natural? I'm not no. saying it's right, but isn't it natural? No. Can, can I say this first, Pastor, and let you speak behind me? Of course. Uh, if you don't, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, th- this is a true statement. I, I was, uh, I was enraged when that boy went down to Charleston and killed those people. And his sister, one of the sisters of someone that was killed, I think she lost three family members. Uh, and she got on television and said, "I forgive." And I'm like, wow, how can you do that? How can you, how, this fast, wh- where did that come from? But it helped to melt the rage in me. It, it took away my anger. And I'll never forget that. It was almost like magic. It took away my anger. And I was like, wow, she may have just changed the world. So, I, I too at one time thought it was natural, but but I saw something deeper in me that I I, I guess a place that I had I was not aware of when, when that took place. So that's 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 my my part of my answer. Thank you, Pastor. Let me go ahead of you. No, thank you. Um, we have been so conditioned until. The things that we say are natural responses are usually brutal things, vengeful things. Is it not natural for me to want somebody to hurt as I hurt? Or is it not natural for me to um, wish to death on someone who killed somebody in my family? Is it not natural uh, for me to hate someone uh, who broke my heart, uh, who took everything I had, uh, someone who I, I trusted. And they emptied my bank account and I got evicted from my home. Is it not natural for me to hate them? None of that's natural. Because the attachments that that are we make and come to those kind of conclusions are totally unnatural. Um, unnatural uh, actions or responses because of who we are. They, this thing that, that people run around on their, with on their car, uh, what would Jesus do? They don't even know Jesus. They don't even know what Jesus did. Let's not know what would Jesus do in the circumstance. The question is, what would Elohim do? And whatever Elohim is going to do, that's going to happen. Meaning that if if it was a natural state of being, then the person would be dead anyway, or they would be hurt anyway, because um, the Elohim would do that. And, and, and uh, the sensitivity that we have when we become more aware of who we are uh, does not allow us 
uh, to, to travel down that road. If Ron had not had uh, at least a glimpse of who he is, what the ladies said would not have changed him. He would have been like, she's a fool. Uh, ain't no way in the world I could do that. And, and I'm sure that at some point in our lives, someone else probably said that or something to that effect. And so this idea of knowing that you are God, that you are Elohim, uh, puts you in a space where you cannot uh, afford to make decisions based on societal, what we call societal norms. Would you mute your final place? Uh, based on what we call societal norms. Um, we have to do things based upon um, who we are as opposed to viewing it through the eyes of society. Thank you. Would you uh, make sure, check your phones and make sure they're muted, please? So, family, to resolve feeling that you want the person to feel that what you're feeling, the hurt that they caused you, how, how to get to the place where that no longer, that feeling is no longer there? Forgiveness. Well, well, I'll say forgiveness. Mrs. Richard, if, if, if I can, in my experience and in my thought, Evelyn, that's why if you can do some, if you can put a space between you and that, so it's not an impulsive reaction, you have the opportunity to examine why am I acting, why am I reacting this way, why does it feel this way, and there's no question it can be painful, hurtful, etc., but the question is what do you want to act upon? And, and to what extent does this really help the situation help all to sort of move on from the situation? That's what takes a little time and energy. And I think that on a societal level is what we're just nowhere near ready on any grand scale to do. Uh, so we wind up with all this, this kind of behavior. I mean, um, and we use such wonderful expressions like he acted like an animal. And yet, you raise your hand and say, uh, what animal? There are occasions when young male chimpanzees have been known to go on sort of raids, raping and beating and everything. But those tend to be individuals who are without a family, a sense of clan or family. So they're alienated. So you have an, a sort of unnatural situation. So I don't think, yeah, and I, and I think we use two easily words like natural instead of normalized if we've normalized it that doesn't make it natural um, but if you stop and think what's this what does this do to me is this where i want to be um, and try to get some space between you and the event then i think you have a way to sort of let go more easily and move on but you can certainly have experiences that are difficult because they're painful but again aren't we saying here over and over again it's not only on a societal level but on a personal level it's an opportunity to examine why do i need why am i acting this way and and what does it, it do to the situation as well as myself it, it, it's, it's more than an opportunity in different ways but and, and going back on capital punishment, just for one little second, I, I was trying to look for it, but I can't find it. I think it was in the 70s. I don't know if anybody else ever read it, but it was, there, was, there was a study that was done, anthropological study, and all the people on all the people who had some involvement in capital punishment. And the outcome was pretty bad. Everybody was punished and hurt by that event so that's something else we need to take cognizance of and not be so quick i sometimes think you can commit an act where basically you forfeit a right to live in a community for a while but then you need to have some 
help probably or opportunity to examine what you did. And I'm not talking about five minutes. It could take years to examine what you did and find a way to put it behind you, let it go, see the error, et cetera, so that you can be a positive, you can be what you are, that core of you that's a positive universal self. But we haven't created on any scale those kind of opportunities. So we're we're sort of stuck in this punishment cycle. And whatever you punish externally, you punish in yourself. This is the flip side of that old folk saying that what you don't deal with at home, you got to deal with in the street. So it's the same thing, just looked at from the other way, I think. So it's harder, but who said harder is not better? Okay. Done. Um, I, I'd like to get back to what, what you were asking, though, Evelyn. It, the, 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 the question is, looking at what we talked about yesterday, I, I don't, I, I don't want to leave that so much uh, because of how powerful it is. Uh, we, we started off maybe a couple of years ago talking about changing yourself and and in a and in a way it, it did that didn't really register it didn't make a lot of sense it, it is now uh, that forgiveness has no boundaries it has no limitations it, it, is, it is an in, energy that 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 just permeates everything it, it, it touches everything everything that has existed and everything that will exist it it it, it captures the universe and the, the 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 more sincere you are the the more desirable you are the higher those vibrations i want to get this right i feel bad because i feel bad that i want to hurt somebody forgive me this person committed a crime, and and that bothers me. But I need forgiveness because I and 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 the space that Richard is talking about to me sounds a lot like what Pastor said yesterday. I might have to talk myself down. You know what, Ron? Relax, relax. You know who you are. Yes, this is an emotional time. Yes, this this does hurt you. But relax, relax. Please forgive me. I gotta forgive myself for feeling like this. That's powerful. And and when we move that place, that's what helps the others out there. That's what uh, the, the the feeling and the vibrations that other people feel. That's how we do it one person at a time. And and uh, you, you know, it, it's it's not easy. And, and the, the 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 wanting to the, the other person to hurt that's very real. The wanting the other person to feel what you feel, we've all been there. Trust me, I know I have. But this forgiveness thing, because you cannot forgive without compassion. Love is going to be there. Love's got to be in this. So whoever. Your, uh, uh, you know, we look at, I, I, I look at you guys on the phone. I look at my family. There's, I, I forgive you for anything you could do to me. I, I love you. I, and so I got to treat everybody like that. I have to. I desire to. That's the path we're on. That's the journey we're on. And and, and, and and the capital punishment thing is, is the same thing. That's seeing life through an immature eye. That's seeing that things from 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 uh, the, the, the the non-spiritual side of us. It, it 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 may sound right, it may sound like a good thing to do when you're at that stage, when you're at that point, but as Pastor said, how many people have been killed that were innocent? So this whole thing comes through. We we can say, what about this? What about that? But 
remember the path we're on. Remember the path we're on. Uh, that, to me, is, is what brings about, and the only thing that brings about balance in the earth. There has to be someone. There has to be someone who, who's seeking enlightenment to do what is right. And, and that is forgiveness. Nothing else has worked. Um, Ron, can I just put something out there too? Um, if we can pull back a little bit from from capital punishment um, and look at the the school situation where we have like the now everybody's talking about the the school to prison pipeline. Um, but what I what I wanted to say was. Um, I know our schools are devolving into like free for alls, brawls sometimes, but I can't tell you how many times um, when, when kids that I've taught will want to sort of strike out at somebody and, and they will tell me their parents said, if somebody did something to them, then they do it back to them. And I'm like, what? <laughs> um, so it seems like everybody seems to be in a mindset of, of, you know, eye for an eye, so to speak. Um, so it seems like the sc schools are just evolving into into just um, places where kids just learn to fight each other. Um, but I think we kind of need to get it out there, get it into the macro, this, and we are doing that, I guess, that forgiveness is always going to be a better option, um, in terms of, um, helping people realize who they are. Um, I remember this one incident where, um, when, I was at at a school and I, in fact, I knew the young lady because I had taught her, um, but she was in a higher grade now and, and she got in a fight at school and, and we, we all knew she knew better, but in the heat of the moment, it happened. Um, and then I know a lot, lots of schools were starting to do restorative justice until, I guess, until COVID came along and then all the school boards started to change in the last few years. But anyway, but at the time we were doing restorative justice. Um, Which is what I... She had to have a conference with us teachers and we were just able to talk to her um, and I talked to her about who do you want to be? Who are you? Um, and this is a moment in your life that you need to make the decision of who you want to be. Um, and what she ended up doing was writing up, because we talked to her about the fact that um, all her all her classmates and people around her now were afraid of her and didn't trust her anymore. Um, so she ended up having to write a letter and read it publicly. And she asked for their forgiveness. And um, that girl just graduated like a couple of years ago and she graduated with honors. So um, I just want to put it out there in terms of, um, you know, parents need to be, need to find a way to be aware that forgiveness is the better path, as opposed to teaching their children to, to fight back or whatever. Um, so she graduated with honors and she's gone on to college. So there's no prison to, to School to prison pipeline for her, fortunately. 
anyway, I just want to put that out there because it certainly, we certainly need to have a change in our schools. And you know who's who's going to be the ones that go to prison from school. We all know. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. Uh, thank you. Th thank you for sharing that. That's that's very powerful. And, and that's that's what we're doing now. Uh, I, I don't think it, it, forgiveness is one of those words. I don't think they're English words to describe the power of it. And, and and the magnitude of of the the effects of it, uh, but but that's a great story. That that is awesome, uh, and and it had to do uh, first with what you guys were putting in her, and then when you guys had the meeting with her, to to sit down and talk and ask her questions and decide who you are. It made her reflect. It made her reflect. But uh, yeah, I, I like that. Someone else, anyone else, want to address that? I, I think that out of everything that has been said this morning, every question that has been raised, every comment that has been made, leads us back to that one word: forgiveness. And you're absolutely right. Uh, that forgiveness carries a different connotation when we look at the reality of what it means as opposed to what we've been told. We use it too loosely. I forgive you. And one of the things that helped me see that is when I was uh, doing the counseling sessions, when people have been raped or uh, beaten or robbed and they were having issues and to process them through that and get them to a place um, where they release it, every one of them has said they have forgiven the person until they had to relive it. And the words would not come from their mouth. I forgive you when they came face to face with it. And that's because forgiveness carry religious connotations and not spiritual connotation. Um, there's no way that you can forgive somebody who did that kind of thing. That's religion. There, there's no way that you can forgive someone uh, who you have not seen or did not even know who it was who did that to you. That's religious connotations. And I, I believe that something is, is on the verge of uh, happening that's going to be atrocious. One of the most barbaric acts that we've ever seen, if not the most. And that is the reason we are being guided to this place to talk about forgiveness. I, I don't believe that this is a discussion in an academic way at all. Why is it that we have returned to this issue so many times, and this time it seems that in relationship to forgiveness, we are bringing into the discussion those acts that are, as Richard put it, say it earlier, normalized in our society, and that doesn't make it natural simply because it's become normalized. The horrendous things that have taken place and are taking place in the Middle East, the horrendous experience that we endure it during the uh, period with George Floyd, uh, this child's play in relationship to what I feel in my soul we are about to encounter. And our discussions of forgiveness is not just, just for us on this phone. Our, our discussions of forgiveness is for this uh, our global forgiveness. Suppose for a moment that 
that we are talking about forgiveness because when this brutal endeavor ends in Gaza, it's going to show, uh, going to end with such carnage until it's going to be essential that forgiveness permeates the atmosphere globally as opposed to seeking revenge for what's taking place. Suppose the carnage that's taking place now is necessary. Suppose that carnage is necessary for the, for the underbelly of the genocidal maniacs to be exposed to a degree that no one trusts them anymore. And we, it brings to an end governance at the barrel of a gun. It brings, through, it brings to an end governance based upon might makes right. And we are going to have to be the tip of the spear when it comes to this thing of forgiveness if we are indeed aware of who we are. We, we have to get to a place, and I don't mean this, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean this literally, have to, we must, we are obligated to get to a place where we don't flinch, we don't hesitate at all when it comes to forgiveness without regard to what is taking place. How do we do that? How, how is it that you can walk in the house and there's carnage in your house of your family and, and you have to do, as the lady Ron mentioned did, forgive? How do you do that? You don't do it simply by walking to that house. It has to start long before you get there. And the way it starts long before you get there is those things that that, that puts you in a tailspin or those things that are heart-wrenching. You remind yourself that forgiveness is not based upon what the act is. Forgiveness is not based upon what someone may or may not say or do. Forgiveness is based upon righteousness. What is necessary in order to bring balance to humanity. Forgiveness is about restoration. Restor restoring to the original um, thing that it was, like restoring a car. What does that look like when we are talking about us in this earth? Forgiveness takes us back to the beginning that restoration from the beginning. In the beginning, there was no need for forgiveness, even though the act was present, because the carnage was not there, because the hatred wasn't there, because uh, the greed wasn't there. So when we go back to beginning, we start out from a pure state of being. And in that pure state of being, we remind ourselves constantly about the power of forgiveness by virtue of doing it. And when we walk into that room, as I mentioned earlier, it's not easy necessarily to do that, but it's a hell of a lot easier than it would have been if you had not been um, in a state, have a state of mind of forgiveness. This lady who said that was already in that state of mind long before those murders took place. The conditioning. 
if we were not people who forgive, we could not have survived what we have gone through. Our ancestors, we never would have been born because our ancestors would have been dead. Without forgiveness, they would have been driven to the brink of insanity or to the brink of, of um, removing their own lives from their bodies or just doing uh, suicidal missions against slaveholders. Forgiveness is what brought us to this place, not capitulation. There's a huge difference between capitulation and forgiveness. Now, we never were going alone to get along. Forgiveness makes it easier to move forward. And I believe that that's where we are right now. We are being stretched beyond anything that we ever dreamed of. This thing called desire, this thing that we talk about being one with the universe is stretching us. It stretches us to the point where we sometimes uh, uh, travel this course of forgiveness, get angry because we forgive. And we know we are supposed to do it. And we are unsettled with that. But we know we have to do it. And that point of being unsettled with it is the place where we sit with it and are reminded of who we are. Ron had to hear that lady say that in order for him to, to be stretched beyond where he was at that time. All of us have had encounters where we, we needed to forgive. And sometimes we said it with our lips, but it wasn't in our hearts. We can no longer do that. We can no longer do that. The realization of who we are puts us in a totally different state of mind because our soul begins to transform our minds. Dependence upon the mind rationalizes all the things and the reasons that you should not forgive. But your soul simply says, forgiveness has no boundaries and no exemptions. That's the thing that I believe we need to probably meditate on or focus on. Forgiveness has no boundaries or limitations. I have no boundaries or, or um, limitations to what it forgives. Thank you. Or what is forgiven? Um, on that note, before uh, there may be a good place to pause right here. What 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 is in a spiritual way? Look at this. That's all the way we're going to look at it. I guess. What, what, what would you say of meditation? What, 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 what is meditation? Pastor? Oh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Sheldon. Hey, Sheldon. Um, I was going to talk about forgiveness, uh, say something uh, else about it. I think is oh, My apologies. I, I just... Tied. No, no, I think yeah. it, it, it does kind of tie to uh, uh, meditation. Um, I like to now look at or think of in terms of uh, forgiveness as uh, an extending uh, grace. Uh, but that grace is not only extended uh, outwardly, it's extended um, to oneself uh, as well. And as Pastor Richard was just saying, it builds upon itself. Uh, and so uh, when he mentioned uh, earlier about, uh, and, and all of this, it 
tied together. So please don't get stuck on one particular thing. But when he uh, mentioned uh, not agreeing with uh, capital punishment and he mentioned himself being Elohim, part of that is going further than that is him understanding he said it, realizing who and more uh, uh, what he is. Um, so he understands um, the the value, uh, the quality. He doesn't see himself as being something that should be uh, discarded. And as a result of that, automatically, he sees that and understands that of others. So uh, by uh, correlation, doesn't see that they in any uh, situation uh, should be uh, discarded. Uh, when uh, Audrey mentioned uh, the little girl who apologized, and when she was talking about the kids that uh, they just want to do a tit or a tat, all of that starts to change. And what happened with that little girl is she saw uh, that there was value put in her from others. And then she was able to then go beyond that and feel that value. And then in a sense, value uh, others uh, as well. All of it is connected um, in terms of extending and giving uh, grace. If I uh, feel like, um, uh, Capital punishment uh, is, is okay, or I agree with it. That means uh, under some circumstance, I believe that I should die and I don't deserve uh, to, to live. Um, this is a, is a lot I'm trying to put it uh, all together, but that's pretty much what point that I wanted to uh, to bring forth was that forgiveness is extending uh, grace outwardly and uh, extending grace inwardly. And as Pastor Richard said, no, that does not mean capitulate or to actually um, allow someone to do anything is because you forgave them. No, uh, forgiving them or extending grace is actually acknowledging to yourself that that person is of value, that person is of quality, that person is uh, worthy. Um, and to not see them as uh, less than in what uh, they are. No matter what they may be displaying, you understand and you realize and you see in spite of their actions, the Elohim uh, in them, whether that is displayed or not. It's almost as if you know more uh, about them or, or you understand and see more in them than they uh, see um, uh, in, in themselves. And like I said, every time you do that, it builds that same thing uh, with you. Uh, when uh, with, uh, one of the scriptures say, uh, don't judge unless you be judged, that's how that uh, works. The same standards that I hold myself uh, to, and I say I am less than for, or, or excuse me, uh, someone else is less than for, I hold myself to that uh, same standard and say that uh, I am not uh, able to be uh, forgiven. Uh, when uh, Jesus uh, asked the um, Father uh, to forgive them because they not do not know what they uh, do, it was just what I said. In spite of their uh, actions, they don't realize and understand uh, who it is uh, that they uh, that they are. They don't understand that they are uh, the Son um, of God uh, in a sense uh, as well. So. And then, uh, Ron, to your question, uh, what is uh, meditation? And it is what is meditation that is re relates to the discussion that we've been having the, um, the past few days. It is being in that uh, state, uh, or at least where it's reachable, even when someone makes you extremely uh, angry, where you can fall back into that uh, place and see yourself bigger than the situation and feel yourself bigger than that situation and get to the point where you can uh, extend uh, grace not only to yourself, but extend uh, uh, grace to that person as well. Well, sorry, I said it the wrong way. Extending grace out really automatically, as a result, extends uh, grace to one's uh, self uh, as well. In the same way that Pastor Richard talked about those people who had been um, sexually abused in uh, counseling, um, and they just said it with the words. The people who actually go through the cycle of forgiveness and they actually uh, believe it, they free themselves uh, as well. That uh, that ball and uh, chain, in a sense, or those shackles, they automatically fall 
uh, fall off from an internal standpoint. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Appreciate quick, that. Quick, quick question to the to the body of the group uh, as it relates to forgiveness. Um, yesterday, I I took a uh, a guy out to eat called Golden. His name is Golden Graham, and I took him out to eat because. It was a little rough start for me in making this transition from Pet Dairy to Walmart, and I've been trying to take him out to eat just to thank him for keeping me encouraged. And the way that he kept me encouraged was on the GM side, general merchandise, you got to do a lot of dropping and hooking. And he stated to me, George, just look at it as practice, always in a good frame of mind. And his cousin came with us to eat, and his cousin knows me by passing and stuff. And his cousin said, George, why are you, you paying for the meal? And I'm like, look, man, I done been on this earth 52 years, and people have helped me. I just want to keep that circle going. So as it relates to forgiveness, what I have heard thus far, and Sheldon alluded to it briefly, we're, we're talking about giving forgiveness, yet I've done some things out here. Well, I'm going to forgive in a nutshell. I'm going to forgive because you all have forgiven me, and I'm going to keep the circle going. And this whole thing of balance and harmony, I'm just trying to bring balance into this topic of forgiveness. What harmony is going to do with that, it's just going to do what it's going to do, yet if you squeaky clean, you may ain't never had to seek forgiveness from someone or no one is, or even if you're clean. But I've done some stuff out here that people have forgiven me on, and guess what? I am going to try to extend that when I have been wrong by people or an individual. Um, because it, it, the topic just can't be from an aspect of you giving forgiveness to an individual. So I'm giving forgiveness because people or an individual has forgiven me. I'm going to love people because I've been loved. I'm going to do things. I'm going to help people because people help me. So the whole aspect of forgiveness, it just can't be a one-sided topic of, somebody has wronged you and like I say if you ain't never done no dirt out here then I don't expect you to understand what I'm saying but if you done done some dirt out here you had to seek forgiveness someone gave you forgiveness so it's to me it's not a hard topic to or a difficult topic to talk about I just like to talk about it in its full entirety that's it thank you very much uh, uh. George, you are, whenever I say uh, extend grace or forgive, I am talking about oneself uh, as well. Uh, so it, it, it's acknowledging, for example, that I have done things uh, in the past and I know that I am better than uh, that particular thing. And so in a sense, I am forgiving myself. And so that same forgiveness or grace that has been given to uh, oneself is the same forgiveness that is being extended uh, to another person. Uh, when some of the things you've uh, done that uh, you're like, wow, I can't believe uh, I did that. But right now you understand that you are better than those actions or that one particular thing. It's the same uh, exact uh, way, uh, except when you're forgiving uh, someone, it's not it's not saying I'm doing you a solid or I'm doing you a favor that you don't deserve. It's saying that I believe in you and I know you are more than that particular uh, action. And I see you as being more than what you actually did. So it's not that you are doing them a, a favor uh, in a sense. I mean, it's not that you're so much doing them a favor as you right. actually lifting them up. And and Sheldon, I agree with, I uh, I agree with everything you said. 
uh, except you said it in a very pretty way. What I said it was is is this very ugly way. Um, but I, I not but however I do agree with what you stated. Um, I just felt you said it in a very pretty way or an attractive way. And my way is, you know, rough around the edges is a little ugly, yet we're saying the same thing. So I agree with what you said. That's it. Thank you. Okay. I was about to ask. I was, I was about to ask. Now, when you say you said it in a very uh, ugly uh, way, because with me saying it in a very beautiful way, I'm actually saying you are a uh, very uh, beautiful in a sense in terms of who George is, right? So, do whatever you can think about the worst thing uh, you did. Think about it in terms of being ugly. Is that who you are? Do you believe that's who you uh, who you are? No, I don't believe that's who I am. However, I don't want to fall into a rhythm where I end up being like that. So I try to make things or be in positions where I can redeem myself. Um, A heavy portion of what I do for humanity is to redeem myself, uh, to prevent things from bottlenecking or prevent people from being stuck. So like I say, Sheldon, I agree with what you're saying, and I agree with what the body is saying. It's just that times that I've been in topics of forgiveness, everybody is talking about how they had to forgive someone. And then when you ask the question, well, I know you done done some crazy stuff out here. Oh, George. The, the conversation. Yesterday, the whole conversation was not about giving someone else. It was about forgiving ourselves. Um, honestly, nobody... On this line, nobody's breath smells like pet milk. Every one of us has done something. But the bottom line is this. You cannot forgive with your mouth. There is no such thing as forgiveness if it's not spiritual. The only way that forgiveness is effective is if you embrace it spiritually. You cannot forgive by doing things. Those things that you do may be a result of forgiveness, but you cannot forgive anyone by doing stuff that doesn't forgive. You forgive this is 100% spiritual. And it must be combined with your earth consciousness and the spiritual essence of who you really are. Otherwise, it's an act that has no validity to it or power at all. And Everyone remains as they are, and no one is restored as a result of the actions that has taken place. The lady on the TV I keep referring to as Ron brought up, she had forgiven long before they asked her about it. It has nothing to do it. She could have taken Dylan Roof to, to dinner and, 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 and bought him a house to live in and still not forgiven him. Forgiveness is 100% spiritual. And, that, and that's, that's the bottom line when it comes to forgiveness. Meditation is 100% percent spiritual. Meditation is more than just sitting, receiving something. Meditation is a type of spiritual becoming. Meditation is a type of spiritual becoming. Becoming what? Becoming aware 
of who you are. Uh, becoming aware of the uh, of uh, the essence of your inherent power. When we talk about receiving uh, energy when the lion's gate open, the opening <clears throat> of a lion's gate, from what I understand now, <clears throat> is a reminder to us of the energy that's all that we already are. We are not receiving, we don't need to receive anything. Everything that we are in need of is already present with us because the things that we need, we are it. There is absolutely nothing spiritual that we have to seek. We are already it. It's be, we, the thing that we have to do is become aware that we are the it. That, that when we sit and meditate, what we are actually doing, I do believe, is closing our eyes and becoming aware of what we are and <clears throat> opening and, and I'm sorry, and becoming aware of who we are actually opens our eye so we can experience, not be, but experience the clarity of the energy that we are, the Elohim that we are. We are, we experience that through meditation allows us to have that experience. It does not give us anything. When we, when when you meditate or when we meditate, especially if we are like focused on the moon or uh, or energy source, when we meditate, we are breaking down the walls that stands between us and knowing who we are, stand between us and experiencing the essence of our being. The walls of selfishness are easy to break down. The wall of lack of awareness is much more difficult to tear down. And that wall of which I speak is a wall that we find out is non-existent. When we see or when we experience who we are, it is a wall that, that, that society has encouraged us to build in our minds, but it doesn't really exist in reality. So being quiet and not talking all the time verbally and just sitting with it is, is an experience of awareness. When we talk about sitting with it, we don't receive anything. We become aware of everything. When Jesus went into the mountain, what Jesus said to us, there are times when you have to separate yourself from this earth awareness and, 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 and be in the midst of us self-awareness so that you can be reinvigorated by your experiences and the experiences that you are reinvigorated by is the reality that you are in this earth to draw things out of people and to bring people to a state of mysticism a state where they see spiritually as you do so so this this state if this meditative state is simply a the, 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 the depth of uh, our desires to experience the essence of everything that exists. And, and, and I can't speak for anyone other than me. 
But I know that when, when I sit, it's different than what it was. And as I've been doing this, that's the experience I was trying to describe yesterday, that I know this is a corpse, this body. I know that I, I, I experience, I'm experiencing the unicity of the all at the same time, the unicity of the no thing. And the unicity of the no thing is filled with possibilities of, of everything. And the possibilities of everything is the possibilities that are there, the substance that we that we are to bring into this consciousness and awareness that moves us beyond believing that there is a wall. The scripture says that uh, that um there were men who were eunuchs for the kingdom. And, and there were those who were made eunuchs, and there were those who became eunuchs for the kingdom. That scripture in Matthew is a total mistranslation. The word eunuch should never have been there because a eunuch speaks of someone who's been castrated. This is not talking about castration. It's talking about mysticism. There are those who are born mystics. And then there are those who become mystics with the help of others. And then there are those who have sought it on their own. And this is what meditation is. It's bringing you to the place where you become what we call a mystic, which is simply someone who is spiritual, who is aware of the spiritual essence of everything around them. And, and their experiences are different than they were before they embraced who they were. And, 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 and there are people who are born mystics, and we call them strange and different, and we try to uh, uh, free them from what we see as something that is unacceptable. And there are those we talk to about understanding the, the spirituality of their essence, and and they and there are those who embrace it, and there are those who don't. And then there are those who sit and they see, and they're uncomfortable speaking because of the environments that they're in, but eventually they begin to speak about what they see, and then the magnetism of the spiritual essence of what they are seeing begins to draw others to them and they are drawn to each other and they become a block of mystics and don't realize they're mystics until they become more aware of who they are. And right now, if we really think about it, when we close our eyes and begin to experience who we really are, those around us who have an inkling of spirituality see us as mystics. And that is a mystic. I use that word because that's the only word I can think of at this moment that give us an understanding of, the, of what I'm trying to express to us. And this, and, and what happens is this thing that we call meditation, that we separate from uh, this earth consciousness to do, we don't have to do it anymore because we are it. We are constantly in this state that we call meditation. And we are constantly becoming more and more aware of who we are, the essence of our being, simply by the environment that we're in, this physical environment brings messages to us constantly, but we, 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 we cannot toss it aside simply because we have that bad, what we call bad experiences with it. It's simply because we didn't know the messages that are in the natural things around us. And that is when we become one with them. You can be agitated and lean against a tree, and the energy in you will be 
out, reoriented. You can walk in the grass and the energy in the grass will reorient you. You can stand in the sun, the same thing, you can be energized. This is the natural, these natural things we see are also messages of energy that, that are here to energize us and that awareness of who we are carries us and catapults us beyond these bodies. And we see that we are far more than our bodies. And we can begin to see that on the outer edges of our essence, there is no end because everything is one. And the breath and, and, and the, the, the everything is just is one thing as opposed to being individual. The tree looks individual with our eyes, but when we see it with our eye, we are it and it is us. And that is why you could lean against it and it will soothe your soul and bring your energy back into compliance with the energy of the universe. And, 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 and the universe, when you think about the energy of the universe, the energy of the universe is always birthed in something. And if the energy of the universe is always birthed in something, that means that it is a womb. And, 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 and our, dis, our, our, our societal disdain for females is a reflection of a disdain for feminine, for feminine energy. And that is the reason we cannot see any further than our nose. That's why we cannot see with our eye because we this disdain or this societal societal blindness when it comes to feminine energy is reflective in our uh, 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 in our misogynist ways. The universe always birthed in something means that we are we are in a state of femininity all the time because we are in a place of birthing continuously. When you ask a question, that's a seed that's speaking to my womb. And that womb produces, it brings to, it, it births a response to that question. And when that response to that question comes, it's a seed that goes in your womb. And what are you gonna birth from that? Because you are a continuous flow of the feminine energy that the universe is. And if it were not that powerful, then why is it that the womb of, of femininity is from is the womb that everything in the every mankind in this earth was born from? It came from that womb of femininity, and yet, and yet. There is a domination of masculinity that is ignorant of it being feminine itself. As, and, and, and this is expressed uh, through the way we treat people who, who, who are not like we say they should be. When we understand that all of us, I have a male body, but I am more feminine than I am male because I am spiritual, and the spirit is Shekana, and Shekana is feminine, it's a feminine word. It is femininity that, that is, is, that is, that is femininity uh, uh, that knows who it is, and that femininity is interwoven throughout this, uh, throughout uh, humanity, and humanity dis dismisses it uh, as being uh, something that's a fluke, or we have uh, incidents of these spiritual moments, as opposed to allowing this energy uh, to to weave us into a tapestry where we are, where we know that we are the essence of everything that is, and that is our constant experience. And and everything that I'm saying to you is is an, is an effort to explain to you or to help you to see the experiences that that, that I was trying to talk about yesterday. And I'm not placing myself above anyone. I'm simply saying what my experiences are. And it's my desire that your experience be as the experiences that I am having. The same experience that Jesus had when he, when he was there with, with Moses and Elijah, that, that's not a physical experience at all. That, that's not Jesus the man doing this. This is a physical, this is an allegory telling us about the spiritual truth. And that spiritual truth speaks to 
the experiences that we have that we have available to us if we don't go to sleep. Those with him with the sleep, meaning that if you don't go to sleep, if you don't sleep on this, if you if, if you don't 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 be distracted by other things and sleep your way through this, you are a, you are able to open your eyes and have the same experiences. Could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Could could you not make yourself available for a short period of time at least? To have this experience, that's what Jesus is talking about. That's what I, that's how I see this thing that we call a state of meditation. We are meditative beings. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Um, Unless there are questions. Yeah, I don't want to cut everybody off this time. Any questions or comments? Well, I on. still stand on I I still stand on this. Okay, when you have wronged a person, naturally or the easiest part to discuss is how you forgave yourself. How did you approach the other individual to say if you wronged someone, that's 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 just the intriguing part of me about forgiveness. I have wronged people. What did I do? Hey, okay, forgive myself. Go to that person. Hey, look, I was wrong. I seek your forgiveness. And from that point, it's a healing process. Because that person, person may not forgive George, me. George, suppose the person is dead. What's that? Well, Hold I mean, I ain't person. never dealt with it. I, you know what? If the person did, I ain't never encountered that before. Yet, we, let's just deal with the reality of it. If you done done no, this, wrong, no, no, I no, get no, it no, someone. No, no, George. No, no, George. This is the reality of it. I have dealt with people who have done things to people and they did. So how do you deal with that? Me I can't answer that. I can only answer or talk about what I know. I can't answer that. I've never had an now, experience is, with that. This is my point, George. This is my point. Everything you're talking about, about forgiveness, is something natural that you do, as opposed to something spiritual that you are. That's the difference. Are you able to see that? I see it, and I agree with it. It's just that, like I say, my experience, when people are talking about forgiveness, they're talking about it from one aspect. Someone has wronged them, like they ain't never wrong or did nothing in this hit game that people are going to look at you sideways on. And I'm trying to bring a degree of balance by asking the question to see what the heck harmony going to do. How, how is it going to react to what I said or uh, what any, anyone else says? The whole I aspect, I, Reverend Richard. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ron, or whoever had the floor. Well, I, I, I want to go back to the woman because this, this, this touched my life. And, and I, I, I know I've, I've talked about this on several occasions. Pastor said something I had not thought about today. He said she was already there. Uh, he didn't say it in those words, but so what that says to me is forgiveness is a state that we live in. I, 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 I'm moving. I see that now that I'm living in a state of forgiveness. I'm living in a state of harmony. I'm living in a state of love and compassion. So regardless of what happened or uh, and and the balance is I'm 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 at a place where I'm constantly forgiving myself because because that's where it has to start 
So it, it's not an external thing that I see and then I react. It is a place that I am because I am already in harmony. Remember when we talked about Jerusalem, it's more than just peace. It moves you all the way to a place of completeness. If you just see it as a place of peace, then it is somewhere that you seek to go when you're out of peace or, or you enraged or whatever, out of peace, you know what I meant. But but if you if you move to that place of completeness, if you're there all the time and that's where you reside, then then it, it's from the heart, it's, it's from your soul, and you don't have to seek anything. So that's the difference. It, it's not a it's not a learned behavior sort of. It is a desire to be complete, a desire to be who I am. That is forgiveness. And that's what I was saying by, I, I, I hope that we can see the power. This is one of the most powerful things we've ever talked about. And maybe that's why we keep addressing it. And that's why I asked Pastor to, 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 to uh, and I appreciate Sheldon's answers as well, uh, to, to talk about meditation again. Because if we move, we're moving to a place now where we no longer see ourselves as abusers. We no longer see ourselves as being abused. We see ourselves, uh, uh, I think Sheldon mentioned this as well, we, uh, being being more than just the enslaved. We're beyond that. So when, when, when we take off those blinders, when we move those veils out of the way, how much more powerful and clearer do we see our meditation? You see, so we're talking about a state of mind. We're talking about your inhale and your exhale. Not just this, this some encounter that I have. Does did that help? Yeah, all of it helps. Every last bit of it helps. Okay. I want us to all be in a good place, though. We we okay? We 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 are. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, our understanding and our, our seeing ourselves more clearer than we ever have, and, and I love that. So, in any final thoughts or questions before we? Ron, 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 Ron. whoa, this is Richard, and I I know you want to end, but I just want to put a question out there for any anyone who would be well courageous enough to respond i'm curious to know something of the technique or how individuals meditate if anybody wants to share that um I, i'd be happy to share my technique if you techniques if you like or experiences but i also was very much taken and had been using myself the term pastor richard used of sit I prefer sit to meditation these days because I have a sense of I need to be doing something if I'm meditating. When in, so I'm just taking myself back to a more relaxed state, which may bring me back to the meditation, but it makes it, I guess I could say, easier to sit for a period of time and to recognize that not to be misunderstood by using the term that there are just sometimes when my brain is just helter skelter and it's just going to be the way it is until I can until it calms down a bit or not so I guess I find the term sit more benign and and work to a point where the stillness becomes stronger and there's a sense of an awareness of the moment and less of everything before and concerns about the future. And even sometimes, not always, it helps if I, I've found humming for me helps more um, than the, the sort of traditional mantra. But sometimes just silent. The thing about humming, just for anybody who's interested, is you're humming in the same manner that you're breathing. So where you might find it difficult to focus on your breath, 
it might be more natural to, without using the word too much, to focus on your humming. Anyway, these kind of things, um, I'd be interested to know the experiences and habits of others. And on uh, finally, on a very personal note, I appreciate Pastor Richard turning on his, not everybody can see it, I guess, but turning on his video because it was more, it touched me more to hear him say what he was saying with his eyes closed. And that made me think, maybe I want to start listening to Foundation with my eyes closed to minimize distractions and to help with focus. So again, that's just something I put out there. All right. I guess we're saying goodbye. So thank you and uh, have a great day. Okay. Uh, let, let, let me say this before we get off there, because I never know who's on and who's not going to be with us next week. You 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 made uh, something you said though. The, 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 your your whole summation there was was very important because there is no one way to meditate, and and I I can appreciate you you saying that talking about how you do it. Uh, what, what Pastor was saying. Explaining to you was the, the internal spiritual part of it. But for for example, how do I do it? Uh, what I have recognized is a lot of my time is not mine anymore. So I find myself driving, or I find myself at work, or yes, I, I the pr preferred way is either laying down on my sofa or or sitting in a chair, or I, I, where I'm most comfortable. But a lot of times I'm at work, and I, I have the uh, the luxury of working by myself. And a lot of times I do meditate. I, I might read a, a line of scripture, or, or I, I may just think about something we've talked about, or whatever. But I concentrate on, it. and 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 my breathing has become the most important part of my meditation. I, I take a I take a, a or a journey on my breath, and, and and I focus on that. So if I'm driving, if I'm in in at work, if I'm in the house, it's my breath that I use. But uh, whatever method works for you, it's it's all. Uh, just want I just want to make sure we we that was that was clear. You might do it by reciting something. You may do something like watching a flame. You may do something with music. I don't know, but what, however you need to do it. But uh, the internals, the spiritual part, is what I was asking Pastor for. Okay. I hope that helps. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I, Appreciate I, that. Yeah, I got to go. I uh, sent the message to a couple of you. I got to go get ready for a funeral, so. I'll okay. see you on the phone tomorrow. Okay. And on that note, guys, I hope you had a great day. Uh, and, and questions or comments, uh, please text them to me or either save them for tomorrow. Great day and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Take care.